Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at the profitability index. Now, when it comes to investing in new projects, every business faces the challenge of choosing which opportunities will yield the best returns while aligning with their strategic goals. The profitability index is a tool that can help address this problem. So what exactly is the profitability index? Well, it's a financial metric used to evaluate the attractiveness of an investment or a project. It's calculated by dividing the present value of future cash flows by the initial investment cost. In simple terms, the profitability index helps you understand how much value an investment will generate for every dollar you spend. And it's a tool that's often used for capital budgeting. So what exactly is capital budgeting? Well, capital budgeting involves the planning and evaluation of major investments or expenditures. The main goal of capital budgeting is to determine which projects or long-term investments should receive funding and how these investments will impact the financial future of the organisation. When assessing potential projects, you will often utilise financial metrics such as net present value, return on investment, payback period, and of course, profitability index. So let's take a look at why you might want to use profitability index rather than some of the other tools that make up capital budgeting. To do that, we're going to see how each of the tools compares against the various things you might want to do when considering the attractiveness of an, an investment. So you can see here on the screen, we have net present value, return on investment, payback period, and profitability index. If we want to account for the time value of money, then net present value and profitability index will do that, but the other tools won't. If we want to account for cash flows over time, then again, net present value and profitability index will do that, but the other tools won't. If we want to quantify the return relative to our investment, then on this occasion, net present value won't do it, but profitability index will do it. And of course, return on investment will do it too. And finally, if we want to quantify this, the speed at which our investment is returned, then the only tool that will do that is payback period. So you can see that profitability index covers more of those bases than any other tool. And really that's why you might want to use it. So let's take a look at how you use the profitability index. There are three steps you need to follow. First, you estimate the future cash flows expected from the project. Secondly, you calculate the present value of each of these cash flows using a discount rate. And finally, you divide the present value by the initial cost of the project. A profitability index greater than one indicates a potentially profitable investment, suggesting that the project's returns exceed its cost. Conversely, a profitability index less than one means the project's cost outweighs its benefits, and it might be wise to reconsider the investment. So let's look at an example to bring this to life. So imagine you run a company and you're considering purchasing a new piece of equipment, and that piece of equipment is going to cost you $100,000. And you're expecting that that investment is going to generate you cash flows of $30,000 per annum for the next five years. Finally, we're going to assume a discount rate of 10%. Now you can think of the discount rate as being the minimum hurdle rate that your investment must achieve each year in order for the investment to be worthwhile. Now, if you're still a little confused about hurdle rates, and don't worry, it's going to become a lot clearer when we go through this example. Now, we've already seen this, but just as a reminder, here are the three steps you need to follow to calculate the profitability index. And we'll move those steps to the bottom right corner of the screen so we can remember them as we work through the example. And our first step is to calculate the future cash flows. Well, we already know the project will generate 30,000 per year for five years. So let's write that here. Our initial outlay is 100,000 right now in year zero. And that's represented in the brackets here, which is how accountants represent negative numbers. So we're spending 100,000 right now, and then we estimate that the project's going to bring in 
30,000 for each year going forward. Now, as you can probably see, we're spending 100K and that returns 150K over five years or 50,000 in profit, meaning we're making a 50% profit on our investment. And another way to say this is we're making a return on investment or ROI of 50%. That 50% return might initially sound pretty good, but what we're not taking account of is the fact that every year the value of money is eroding through inflation. So $100 in five years time isn't going to buy you anywhere near what $100 can buy you today. And this is why we have step two. It's there to calculate what the future cash flows we're expecting are worth to us today. So let's take a look at how you calculate those present values. So to calculate the present value of our year one cash flow, we simply divide 30,000 by 1.1. Now 1.1 represents our hurdle rate that we've assumed of 10%. Now, if your hurdle rate was 20%, then you'd set this value to 1.2. If your hurdle rate was 35%, you'd set this value to 1.35, etc. To calculate the present value of our year two cash flows, it's a very similar calculation, except this time we multiply the 1.1 by another 1.1 because we need to discount for two years. So basically what we're saying is we're taking our 30,000 in year two and we're dividing it by 10% to bring it back to year one, but then we're gonna divide it by another 10% to bring it back to its present day value. We then repeat this calculation for all future cash flows, as you can see here. Now, if you'd like to know more about net present value, I have a whole video about it that I'm going to link to in the description below this video and you can see in much more detail how it's done. So now if we complete the calculations we've just laid out, that gives us the net present value for each future year of cash flow we're expecting this project to bring in, as you can see here. And if we add everything up, that gives us a net present value of $13,723. Now the good news is that we've got a positive number, which means we've made a profit or we're expecting a profit. If the number was negative, then we'd be expecting this project to make a loss. The not so good news is that translating our future cash flows into what they're worth today, we've only made a profit of just shy of $14,000 against our initial $100,000 investment. That's nowhere near as good as what the ROI figure would lead you to believe. Now, the final step is to calculate our profitability index, which we do by dividing the present value of all future cash flows by our initial investment. And when we do that, we get a profitability index of 1.13723. And that's good news. A value greater than one means the project is profitable, whereas a value less than one means the project is unprofitable. Of course, a value of one means you're going to break even, so it's probably not worth doing that project unless it has some strategic benefit. The big advantage of profitability index is it allows you to compare the relative profitability of multiple projects quickly, even if they differ significantly in scale and investment required. For example, it's e if you see two profitability index and one is 1.1 and one is 1.5, it's pretty easy to see that the one at 1.5 is much more profitable per dollar inputted into the investment. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of the profitability index? Well, in terms of advantages, then, as we just said, it's efficient in comparing projects. You can compare the relative profitability of multiple projects quickly, even when they differ significantly in scale and investment required. Secondly, it's value oriented by focusing on the value created per unit of investment. It aligns closely with the goal organizations have to maximize shareholder value. And finally, it's useful in capital rationing. It's particularly beneficial when resources are limited because it helps prioritize projects that provide the highest return per dollar invested. In terms of disadvantages, then you're obviously dependent on accurately being able to forecast your cash flow. Secondly, it may ignore absolute profit sizes. So PI doesn't consider the total profit volume. So a project with a high PI, but relatively small total profit, 
might be less desirable than a bigger project, but with a slightly lower profitability index. And finally, there's some complexity in the calculation. So calculating present values involves making assumptions about your discount rate and about your future cash flows, and that can complicate the process and lead you to incorrect decisions. So in terms of our take on the profitability index, then it's a practical and effective tool for making informed investment decisions. It provides a quick and straightforward metric that helps compare potential returns of different projects relative to their costs. However, like any analytical tool, its effectiveness is contingent upon the accuracy of the input data and the context in which it's used. So as long as you understand its limitations and use it in conjunction with other financial metrics and qualitative factors, the profitability index can significantly enhance your decision making and project evaluation and capital allocation. So that's it for this lesson. I really hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.